Ubo. Hi everyone, Estenio Estano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new SZA album, S.O.S. Top Dog Entertainment's queen of R&B back with her first full-length album in five years. Following the fan favorite Control, this thing over here has been, uh, long awaited. The fans have been begging for it. It's finally out, and it is a lot. No doubt SZA has spent a lot of her time since Control writing and marrying on ideas, because she hit us with nine more tracks than she did on her last record. And some of the singles to this thing uh, go back as far as a couple of years ago. But still, that has not stopped this new LP from feeling new, from feeling fresh and mostly cohesive, which is a difficult feat when you're hitting fans with over 20 tracks and only one of them's a shorty. The song Smoking on My X Pack, which is a hilariously toxic rap cut where SZA burns a bunch of mediocre men and bitter exes over some chipmunk soul chops. We get standout bars like you hating from nosebleeds, I wish you well. It's kind of a crime that this cut is so short. But outside of that song, this is a really robust and thorough record. I can only hope not just the fans, but the casual can appreciate just how much magic SZA has handed over in this album cycle. Because no doubt some people are going to have a harder time processing this record all the way through because there's just so much material here. Nor is SOS as concise or snappy of an album as Control, which yes is due in part to its length but also its production choices. Because there is a decent share of strong, lush beats on this LP. Kill Bill, for example, with its warm bass, crisp drums, and sparkling guitar lines. Gone Girl's got some strong bass parts as well, top with some classy electric piano keys. The murky and nocturnal trap beats and thick 808s on low are really great. And SZA even makes an attempt at a, a pop punk cut as well on this thing, which may be my least favorite as the drums and the distorted guitars on the chorus um, are a little flabby. They don't really hit with the bite I would hope something in this style would, but the tune is there, and the fact that SZA even attempted something in this vein speaks to the versatility of the album. But yes, those tracks are here, but uh, the vast majority of SOS's music is devoted to space and atmosphere openness. There are actually quite a few tracks on this thing where the keys and guitars come across almost shy or afraid of leaving an impression, be it on shirt or far or even the chords that open up the song special, where the highs are cut off to purposefully make it sound like uh, kind of muddy and like the guitar is coming from another room. Taking this kind of sonic approach on an album that is this long, I could see why on the surface it may seem like a bad thing. It's going to lead to a more boring record, a grayer record, a more drab record, but I think there's a bit of a trade-off going on here, as this change in instrumental approach does leave more room for SZA's vocals, which I think this time around are better and bolder, at least she wants to get that point across, especially on the intro title track, which, yeah, has a stunning performance, so some very braggadocious and in-your-face lyrics. Really seems like a moment where SZA is not just trying to convey to the audience the level of passion she's approaching this record with, uh, but also the uh, place of desolation she is operating from here. Just like the cover kind of shows, it seems like she's stranded in the middle of nowhere or in a giant body of water. Much of the time it feels like her vocals on this thing are bouncing off of the far walls and high ceilings of a fortress of solitude. So because of the way things have been switched up sonically on this LP, SZA has really given herself the challenge of carrying an album that is a lot more skeletal and bare, which I think she succeeds at, at doing, case in point, the song Notice Me, which is one of a few tracks on this album that is so catchy I can imagine it being accompanied by a much more bubbly instrumental, maybe even something along the lines of what you may hear in a uh, Doja Cat-style pop crossover. But the vocals on this track are so fiery and and the song is so strong, it doesn't really need it. Plus, I think the simpler approach here makes the songs that are uh, sadder, more intimate, more introspective, hit a lot harder. Really just like a scud missile to the feels, like the beautiful guitar and string combo on Blind, where SZA sings about being frustrated and embarrassed about how blind she is to the better options that she has romantically in her life. Uh, again, this instrumental backdrop gives this story kind of a cinematic feel. The feelings of desire weigh really heavy because of the simple instrumental palette on snooze. Can't just snooze and miss the moment, you're just too important. Very strong tune on that track too, I Hate You lives up to its title.
title because of how potent its emotions are too. The rigid beats and kind of quirky, lazy synth lines are an interesting combo, which sets the stage for a tale of anger towards somebody, but simultaneously you are missing them and itching for sex with them. The verses do have a lot of mixed feelings, but the chorus pretty much sets it straight. And if you wondered if I hate you, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> then there's Open Arms, which is a large, powerful, sad, and self-deprecating anthem where SZA throws her self-esteem out the window, backed mostly by some very simple and plunky guitar arpeggios, as she cries out with some very sharp melodies about being willing to uh, take this person back despite all the bullshit. Travis Scott, as well, drops a very focused verse on the song that I think matches the tone and, and theme of the whole thing, so good on him. We have more acoustic guitars painting the backdrop of Far, where SZA's vocals steal the show once again, uh, she kind of switches things up narratively, singing not about uh, running to somebody, but running from. And while the reverby guitars and beats on Too Late may fit the same color palette as much of everything else here, there is a stylistic shift going on with this track, as this is more of a groovy and sensual little pop cut with some of the strongest choruses on the entire record. Moving so close we can bust. Is it bad that I want more? Then there's Special, which is a stunningly tender moment from SZA, where she recalls a time when she was younger and felt insecure, kind of comparing herself to another woman. Being upset, she doesn't find herself special in some way, but then we fast forward to a more current time in her life where she has kind of reached a special in a sense, but now she has regrets and she's battling different kinds of insecurities. Ghost in the Machine with Phoebe Bridgers uh, is a much better crossover than I thought it would be. The pillowy and tension building first half slides elegantly into the piano passages that back Phoebe's vocals, which reach a very powerful point of crescendo toward the end. Love Language, in a lot of respects, is a classic Love on the Rocks R&B narrative. The shy and sensual chord progression fits the bill as well. And there's a lot of edge of your seat tension going on between the two characters uh, being sung about on the track, between their desire for each other, but also dishonesty toward each other too. As I said earlier, the intro cut is really fire on the album. The outro cut featuring ODB is really fire as as well. We kind of have a, an intro verse from him, and then from there, uh, SZA closes things out with a lot of uh, swagger on some melodic and sung lines, which I'm glad she kind of ended the album off on a strong note with some attitude and confidence, considering how uh, raw and vulnerable and revealing some of the cuts are uh, in the middle. As far as complaints and lowlights, I only have a few. I mean, one, it is a very long record. Uh, maybe the acoustics are leaned on a bit too hard. Maybe some some of the instrumentation is a bit too shy. Don Tolliver is handily the weakest feature on the entire record. Really a non-factor on the song he appears. The pop punk track, again, I don't think goes over as well as it could. And Shirt, while I think the groove and the syrupy R&B vibes are there, the tune just isn't, and I think that is made uh, just very apparent by how well-written a lot of the other songs and how catchy a lot of the other songs on the record are in such a way they could be presented with a myriad of different instrumentals and they would still hit. But yeah, overall this album's great. One of the best I've heard this year, uh, SZA killed it. I didn't love every track, but it's such a long album. There were bound to be some cuts that I wasn't super crazy about. But despite a few weak points here and there, I think this record overall is defined by uh, growth, by maturity, artistically speaking anyway. I know there has been some comment about uh, how SZA is kind of uh, cycling around a lot of the same emotions and vibes around toxicity and exes and lust, which, yes, is true, but I think she's writing about those themes in a slightly different way, at a slightly different angle, at least a, a enough to make this record work in its own right. It's still a powerhouse of passion, great vocal performances, and great songwriting. I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this one. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, this is a, a forever.